Um, got nice to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, yes, my name is Mike Brown from East Staffordshire Council. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what permitted development allowances are for your aerials and also for satellites. Um, obviously give you an input as well into what we as planning officers look at. It should permission be required for your aerials and give you an idea of um, what issues are likely to arise. Obviously, if there are any questions, then by all means ask me at the end or after we've finished or whatever. Right, if we start with um, aerials themselves, they're considered a um, permitted development as long as they are sited within a rear garden and don't exceed three metres in height when in the centre of the garden or two and a half metres in height within two and a half metres of the, within two metres of the boundary. You can have no more than two uh, antennae anywhere within your domestic garden um, and the scale of the antenna cannot be more than 100 centimetres in any linear dimension not including any projecting feed element, reinforcing rim, mounting or bracket. And the cubic capacity of each antenna must not exceed 35 litres. If attached to the dwelling on the roof, then the antenna must not project more than 60 centimetres above the chimney stack. It must not project more than 60 centimetres in any linear dimension. If you live in a listed building, then the is going to be needed come what may. If it's in a conservation area, then permission will only be required other than what was stated above if it can be visible from the street scene. If the antenna, however, is portable and it can be moved around on wheels, then it's um, quite possible that you won't need permission for it because it's a temporary structure and therefore not developed in its own right. If it should need permission, then we move on to what we as planning officers will consider when it, the application is submitted. Now, quite often we get um, neighbours uh, stating that they're concerned about interference and impact on electrical items. Um, we as officers can't consider that. It's considered that that matter is discussed elsewhere um, and licensed elsewhere within sort of wireless te uh, telegraphy legislation um, and it is within those agencies that they will control that impact if there is any. The only time planning would take into account is if there's an already an aerial there that's applied to be retained and they can demonstrate some interference. But then we'd only get involved to condition it and require an independent agency to come and test the equipment and to sort out any potential issue. The sole material impact we'll look at is the visual immediacy impact of the aerial. Now, that generally will come down to what impact it will have on the skyline. So, for instance, if you've got a two-storey property and you've put an area in the rear garden, you can barely see it from the public street, then we as officers won't consider that to be an issue. Whereas if you're in a bungalow and it's that the area is sort of 10 metres high, then the visual impact is going to be much more significant. And we may consider that the, the area isn't appropriate for a residential area because it's quite industrial in well, some can be quite industrial in the viewpoint. What sometimes it, um, overcomes that issue, however, is if you have, say, a tree line immediately to the rear, whereby the area will become lost visually in that, um, in that tree belt. So that's how we consider what, whether uh, an area is acceptable or not. <coughs> now, some councils have historically applied conditions requiring the lowering of mass during daylight time to limit that visual impact. We as a council don't tend to do that. It's not really an appropriate condition. So either the area is acceptable or it's not. Um, but obviously, if you want us to come and discuss that with you before you spend your money on your application, then by all means we can do that as an office. Um, so that's it for um, aerials. But if we move on to dishes, uh, there's only one allowed per building. Um, it must not exceed 90 centimetres in uh, width. And on a roof, it must not exceed the height of the chimney. But if it is attached to the chimney, then it must not exceed 45 centimetres. On flats, only two dishes are allowed on each property. Now that's not always the case, because if you go around the town, you'll see many, many, many <coughs> But technically, there's only meant to be two, and they're not meant to exceed 1.3 metres in size. 
There is a requirement in the legislation for any satellite dish to be discreetly sighted. Now, there's no definite about that. So, if you think it's discreetly sighted, then we don't. And unfortunately, it comes down to what our opinion is. So, um, you might have to relocate it if uh, we're not happy with it. Um, so that's really it in terms of what you're allowed to do under planning legislation uh, without requiring consent and how, uh, if it does need consent, we will consider it. So if there's any questions, just let me know. Uh, just a question on, yeah. you said that I can't to come out and have a look at the mm -hmm. location of the hospital downtown. Yeah. Do you make a challenge of that? No. Great service. Okay. Um, yes. um, you said the maximum height is three metres. Mm -hmm. Now, is that including the aerial on top of it at its maximum height? Yes. Because some aerials are tiltable, mm -hmm. angleable, where three metres may be the maximum height. Yeah. Including the aerial. Including, yes. So if an aerial is then a tilting aerial above three metres, it's not acceptable. Well, it would need planning permission, and then it should be judged against the, right. uh, the criteria. Yeah. Okay. What happens if you live in the road bungalows and there's houses all around you? Like, what's the height effect? <laughs> um, well, it's still the same uh, dimensions in terms of the three metres. Obviously, what we'll judge then is obviously visually it's a lot more prominent than it's where it matched up in the knees, it's going to stick up a lot more above the existing built form. But then we look at um, what else is in the street scene. For instance, if there's a number of telegraph poles, street lights, a tree belt, or which will screen and distract the eye away from the mass, then the visual impact becomes less. Whereas if it's, um, say for instance, on a corner and it's open to the street on the sides, then the visual impact is much greater. Mm -hmm. And then we might say it's not such a good idea. Yeah. You're saying that anything which is moving mm -hmm. has wheels on it. Yes. It's not required to find the Yes. Okay, here is a proposition. Okay. So if I build in my backyard yes. a platform mm -hmm. with four wheels on it yeah. and a hundred foot mass <laughs> with a big antenna on top, yeah. and I can prove that I can move that a few feet in either direction, mm -hmm. it does not require enough. We might take at the point that um, it's not readily movable. I mean, obviously you can move around the garden, but you can take it out of the garden because it's so big. And therefore... But I can lower it, so... Well, potentially, if you were lowering it down, then maybe it would... So a movable, lowerable, hundred foot mass... Potentially, no. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, <laughs> although... <laughs> yes. Well, the legislation states that if it's movable, you can... Um, do it. Obviously, if okay. it's a case whereby... So there's no need to expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a case whereby we consider that it was a bit beyond what we need... Can you put it on your front? You should put it on your front garden if no. it was moving. Um, it's visible from the street scene then, and therefore it needs to consent in its own right. Um, I mean, if, if you're keeping it there and just moving around the front garden, then... Well, no, I mean, it's the fact that the car would be towed to the middle of the hill and be towed to the It's possible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not a hard and fast rule. I mean, if, if we spot that it's there for weeks on end and it's not moving, then it's going to be a case that we decide then, you know, maybe it doesn't need permission. Do you, yes. <coughs> do you consider, uh, under your sort of reading, the safety aspects of it? Uh, <coughs> Historically, the planning inspector would deal with any appeals that we as planning officers deal with. They argue that you don't really need to consider it. Um, there have been issues sometimes where people have um, anchored masts across people's gardens and things like that, and there's been safety concerns raised. But generally, that all that they do is require that the removal of that uh, anchoring point and to anchor it somewhere else. So it's not going to be a reason that we refuse it. We may come back to you and say, there's got to be a better way to make sure this is safe. But it's not a, a thing whereby we can say, no, on safety grounds. 
Well, so the, uh, the anthem has been up for a certain length of time, mm -hmm. uh, and, and somebody sort of complains after four years. Time. Four years. Yeah. If it took more than four years and it's not been spotted, then it, no, you can't take enforcement action. Does, does this apply to other districts as well? It's the standard rule. How do you go about approving four years? It's down to the applicant's approval. It's in this month's RATCOM. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On your figures, what, what about television aerials? Because a lot of them are way, way above the height of any house or bungalow. Yes. Uh, technically, they're all covered by the same legislation. So, so we can go around then and complain about their television aerials and then have to remove them. <laughs> well, whether we require them to remove them or not, the, the question, so we've got to just see whether or not there's any visual or material harm from the aerial. If it's that high for a reason and visually it looks acceptable, then we'd probably say, well, there's no public interest in us requiring them to put an application and retain it. We'd just say, well, it's a reasonable requirement for their occupation of that dwelling. Um, so, yeah, I mean, technically all, all areas are covered by this legislation and they, they all get all required permission, as they Okay, you, you specified that there wasn't a requirement uh, to lower masks. Um, but if you did anyway, mm -hmm then normally they would be out of sight. Would that be in, in, in the favour of any applicant that they're doing? Not in and of itself, because we can't really control them with planning legislation. It wouldn't be considered a reasonable condition to require you to do it and us to go out and monitor it every day to make sure it happens, um, which is generally why um, we don't like to put that sort of condition on, because it's not reasonable for the two parties involved. Um, however, like I say, some planning inspectors have done it in the past, so it's not unheard of that there are that sort of requirement to put on. Um, I can't see that we're likely to do it as a planning officer ourselves, um, simply for that reason, because we're not going to come out and check in here every day. Yeah, but what I'm suggesting is looking at it from the obverse view, yeah. in the sense that um, if it was going to be lowered anyway, mm -hmm. and 99% of the time it won't be new, so it will be lowered out of the way. It will only be uh, a view, not only view, but it's in use, yeah. which is probably going to be late at night and may it all be dark in there. Yes, I mean, unfortunately from our viewpoint, we couldn't consider that. Because of the, the reason that I, um, I said to us, the, the room can go out every day. Um, obviously, it's to your benefit and probably neighbours if you do do that, um, but from a planning viewpoint, we of course we can take into account. Yes, well, four years old to start. Yes. Uh, what about um, wire aerials? Because they run horizontal down the garden, not mm -hmm. the door. Um, they would come under the 60 centimetres in terms of, let me check. Uh, not more than 100 centimetres in any linear dimension. So it, that doesn't look like that. Yeah. yeah. Just going back to the you clarify. Which I'm sorry. 100 centimetres isn't very. It's, it's not, not a very long piece of wire. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Three foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it says in the legislation. Really. Do we need planning permission for washing lines? No. Because they're probably like a wire area. They're not. <laughs> 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 you want to be washing them with a tailor. Sometimes they would pipe so you go around. I need planning permission for one meter of wire, ten foot above the ground in my life. Just going back to non permanent movable structure, yeah. um, mm -hmm. does it have to have wheels or just non permanent? If it's, it's not non permanent, oh, essentially. Yeah. If it's so freestanding and not fastened to the ground, it's just stood in yeah, the same way. I mean, for instance, you can do it with um, structures within fields, 
Germany's obviously laying the permission, but if you stick it on skids so you can move it around, then that's considered a temporary structure and therefore it doesn't need permission. Um, but again, it has to be so that we can, sit, we can readily tell that it's going to be movable. Yeah. Many I people. Want it well, we're not saying you can't do it, or we're saying it might be planning permission for it. Would you like to apply for it? Yeah. Correct. So, if we put, what do you, what do you define as movable? Just that, essentially, that so you can move it around your garden, it's readily movable. What, by six people pushing it? Well, yeah, technically, as long as it's not hanging to the ground, you can move it around, and it's considered a uh, movable structure. And there was no limitations on height? Not that I could see when I was looking for the last place. What's that, Mast. Not that I could see earlier when I was a bit of legislation. I mean, I can look through and try and clarify that matter for you. So obviously, it's, it seems like it's a, a salient point for, for everyone here. Yeah. Yeah. Follow me and tell them. If you have a mast that is three metres tall, mm -hmm. you don't have a mast that is Correct. So if you then have a temporary mast strapped to that, the structure that is three metres tall doesn't require planning permission. Yeah. And the, the antenna that you're using is a temporary structure because you can strap it to the meat. Yeah, I think we need to go remove it. You've got to move You can move it as long as you could move the whole of the mass yeah. away from the supporting structure. It wouldn't require permanent. No, because the supporting structure would be a uh, permanent feature. Or less than three metres. <coughs> but when you attached your, your mast to it, it would be more than that. Or there'd be a support for yeah. that, yeah. essentially. So, yeah. yes, um, it'd be for that. Yeah. At the back. This has become more of a problem over recent years for all these people sitting here because of Wi Fi, wireless phones, all the rest of it. Is all they're trying to do is get their antennas above that and into free space. Do you ever uh, reassess your guidelines that you have to stick to? You know, or is it still in like the 1900s? You know, have you reassessed what you uh, you're doing? The government guidelines, I'm afraid. So it's not that we, not ones that we can set to local council. Um, these are national, so there's nothing that we could do as such unless we brought out specific new guidance just for East Staffordshire uh, to change this. Um, obviously, if you wanted us to, as a council to look into that, absolutely, then you need to write in, and then our policy team could look into bringing out some uh, legislation specific for East Staffordshire. Right. So yeah, if you want to uh, drop me an email or what have you, we can um, look into that for you. Yeah, it, it seems that the, the planning laws legislation don't seem to be keeping up with the, the radio world at times. No. But another question is, you've said it doesn't matter about the size, if it's portable, it doesn't matter about the size of the antennas on the portable mast. Mm. Does it technically have to be within your boundaries? As in, within your garden? If you're putting it in your garden on the portable mast, does it have to be within your parameters, your boundaries? The permitted development plan is only applied to garden areas, so it would be your garden. If it's beyond that area, say in a field at the back, then it would automatically... No, if you, if you were to put a, a pole that's 100 metres in your garden, which is movable, yeah. how far out can that antenna go? Oh, Not necessarily high, but how wide that, can that it wouldn't be a planning matter, it would be more of a legal matter, because you'd be encroaching on the neighbours, I assume. No. Um, the matters of sort of um, land ownership and where things come, similar with... Um, mm -hmm downpipes and drain and cuttering and things like that. Um, from a planning viewpoint, if your extension is right up to your boundary and then you put a pipe on the, the side, yeah. we wouldn't consider that because it's a legal rather than planning matter. Whereas obviously your neighbour might come have yeah, a word. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, bro. I'll just raise something to add to the council there, because we're from Dudley. Yeah. Three metre pole. Mm -hmm. 
centre of the garden. Yeah. I've got a small mini beam on. Yeah. The end of the beam cannot be within two metres of the boundary. Okay. So it's at 2.5 this way and 3.5 that way. Yeah. He's past it. Yeah. But the neighbours still keep complaining. <laughs> How far do any council go in as much as the complaints of neighbours that basically they're just being nasty now? So you've got permission? Yes, but he's not written to tell me this as usual. <coughs> they never get that. They keep promising. Yeah. We will confirm it in writing. Well, it sounds to me like that would be permitted to them if it's three metres and then yeah. two metres away from the bank. Yeah. Um, so if he hasn't written to you to confirm it, then what he can do is put in a uh, stick of lawfulness application, which um, would require them to give you a formal written decision right. um, on your structure. Um, I think they cost, the prices have just gone up recently, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. not, not that this is a council, this is from the, the government. Um, I'm not sure how much they are actually, I think they're about £100 pounds there, they're about, if you want to get an actual written confirmation, there's permitted development. Um, but from what you told me, that sounds like it is committed to them anyway. In which case, um, <coughs> you know, this object Well, I was told originally I could have a, to, I, The original council guy that come down from the enforcement yeah. said, How many do you want? Yeah. And I says, Can I have five? Yeah. And he said, Yes. He said, For any more than five, and we will go after you on clutter. Okay. <laughs> The whole idea was just to really annoy the neighbours now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, and that's really annoying them. Yeah. Um, I haven't put four more up. <laughs> I think I've just been pushing my luck a bit. Yeah. Well, from what you say, um, that's pretty bad, so... Yeah. It wouldn't be anyway. I mean, like, like I say, from every point of view, planning office, the only thing we look at is visual immunity. It's three metres high. I can't imagine you can see it from the street anyway. No, you can't have that all the hedges could down to the river before the camera. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It feels really easy anyway, I mean. Yeah. 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 You're going to lose that against the houses that it's up against. Oh, the trees. Yeah. 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 I got planning permission for a mask on the back of my house quite a few years ago. Yeah. One of the things that I did was I put down that the antennas were experimental and the antennas would be changed quite yeah. frequently. And they agreed a 10 metre mast, mm -hmm. but didn't agree to any unlimited height of the antenna. Okay. Is that normal? Can we normally apply for that and say because it's an experimental hobby, the antennas may change? Because they passed it and allowed me to. Uh, but the, um, so I don't exceed 10 metres on the mast, but the, yeah. the antenna, one of the taller antennas is 4 metres. They did the same with me as well, I put on my application that I'd be using different frequencies, so the antennas would change in shape and so on, but mine got fast as well. Yeah. So does that mean I can add a long wire, for instance, onto that antenna without fear of breaching any planning, as long as it's not on a permanent basis? Let's go back and look at the decision notes and see if there's anything to put on there in terms of limitations on that. Yeah, on nothing at all. It was just basically the mast will not exceed 10 metres, but the antennas are experimental. Mm -hmm. You can change it. <coughs> I mean, it sounds to me like there wouldn't be any limits on it, but I'd need to look at the specific what was submitted at the time and what yeah. the decision notice was. Because I've never had a problem since, yeah. and I've since changed the mast to a mast that now collapses down, a portable okay. mast, but it's in the same location for <coughs> convenience. But I was just curious if the other guys here would get away with that. Do you have to be absolutely particular about the antenna and name the antenna? Or can you get away with saying it's temporary, they're experimental, the antennas will change, but the hot the mass so will never... If you mention it in your application and indicate what's likely to occur, then you should be okay. So obviously that's in the application, we should consider it, consider it as yeah. part of the application. Um, if it's not in there when you submit it and you go and change it at a later date, then it might be that the officer might be. Yeah, I was, I, my father's an architect, so he did it right for me. So, uh, yeah. But that's, that's the same game. Is, it, is, I don't breach anything by changing it then, on that basis. Not like it's all mentioned in, within the application, which it should be considered when the right. permission was granted. Is that something these guys should do as normal? 
because it's an experimental hobby and we do change that term, should we try and concentrate on saying this is the mass that will never exceed this, but the antennas will change? And uh, this is the type of antenna. Would it detriment an application? <coughs> Shouldn't do. Shouldn't. Yeah. Not unless you know that they came to large portions. Yeah. Of, yeah. This is sort of an add into the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, will planning get in the way of emergency planning and, and resilience? Uh, because certainly within East Staffordshire buildings, we have a difficulty because the uh, uh, local authority has no buildings, which means that the, the emergency antennas are in the wrong place. And of course, the new place is a very well Um So, how do you propose to enable us to ensure that the establishment is covered for emergency communications? Um, that's not entirely a material consideration. I have seen it mentioned, and it, you can take it into account, but it's not one of the major issues that we look at. The major one is visual impact. Um, we can take it into account, but ultimately, we we'll swing the decision one way or another. So, as long as it looks nice, it doesn't matter that we don't have the emergency communication to the middle. Pretty much. Um, the panel's been up without having the option seat, so that's all you have. Hypothetically, could you take that down and put another one? Or no, it's a neutral, then, or subject to... Right. So, if you're there by the board, you don't have that information, you're safe. Uh, if it's up to four years, then it's immune from enforcement action, and therefore you don't need to apply for it. Until you change the answer. <laughs> 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 Again, it would have been up for more than four years, and no one's complaining, we haven't investigated it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to be able to answer that question. Okay. 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 Talk about the view from the frontage. <coughs> what happens it? Does it make any difference if you've got a public footpath to the room properly? Uh, not as such. Um, we just look at what the visual impact was. It, uh, I mean, footpath, public footpath, anything. So I had a conservatory built and because of the size we wouldn't normally need planning permission but because there's a footpath at the back of the property we had to apply planning permission for the... For the that and the old legislation. Was it? Was that oh, six years back? ago? Yeah, legislation's mm -hmm. changed. Okay. Okay. Um, Go up. Uh, it used to be if it was getting closer to a footpath, then you need planning permission. Yeah. Whereas now it's of the size of the back of the, the dwelling. Right. So if it's um, less than it's four metres, then you would need planning permission. Okay. Right back. Completely different question. Friends of mine live on a narrow boat, and they're amateurs. Yeah. How do you do about putting antennas up on on a narrow boat? Is because that you can't hide it, can you? So is there any difficulty? Mobile, right? it's a, it is a mobile, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's no limit. Yeah, it's a limit. No, there is a limit. Not as far as I'm aware. I've never come across no. that myself anyway, to be honest with you. So, um, if there's some obscure bit of legal legislation on it, I can look into it. Yeah, because they're not in the furniture, but they're permanently in one place with the boat. I think it's still considered. But it's still in the Yeah. Jules won't have to be a neighbor to come straight into the house. Anybody can complain yep. about television antenna being Mechanical ones, you know. Do you mean why are you all on that? Street singers, the tower from Ivory Road, coming in the area. That therefore becomes part of that street singer, I guess. Correct. So with Maria, we've got the guy on corner with the tower, and he's gone, with permission. Yeah. Why would you not give it to. That one's quite removed. What we'd look at is say, for instance, in this case, stand at the top of it, the cul de sac, and look down. What do you see? That, that would be the street in that particular instance. Um, looking at the wider character, then you could say, well, there's one around the corner. Um, but 
ultimately when you look in the streets in the immediate area around it and what the character of that area is. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's what we're looking at ultimately. We will go a bit further. <coughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear when I can see how uh, I can see lots of Android uh, antennas and other masks. So would that be my street scene? I can say the four counties where I am. But you're street scene, yeah. So I'm just saying, you think other little bit just you're not looking at the bit further around the corner, so that's the thing to stop that. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's just the, the character of an area, isn't it? I mean, obviously, they vary from place to place. It's yeah. just the, the nature of where we live in Burnham. Would it matter which angle you call this out you look Yes, we look at them all, to be honest with you. Um, and the I think you'd be able to see it because it's quite low level. You can see the street scene antenna down the road from the end of there. Not that I remember. Can you check that? It also matters as well, I think. In the summer, the trees are a hell of a lot bigger. Yeah. You're looking at it now, there's no leaves on the trees. Obviously, you're going to see an aerial and max. If you came in July, you'd go, oh, that's it. The trees are there. Mm. We have to try and consider that within our decisions. Right. Um, so, ultimately, but, I mean, you have to be hang on about it. If, if, if there's a tree there, then you know the wind's going to be up here. The sun is going to be on. <laughs> so, you'd have to show a bit of foresight and consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's best to try. Yeah. Am I right thinking mobile phone operators can put a 15 metre mass up? Right, they've got different sure. legislation. Sorry, sorry? They've got different legislation. Do, do they have to apply for the sure. They don't. If it's under 15 metres, uh, not 15 metres or under, then it comes under what's known as a prior notification, which isn't a full application, essentially just the, I'm going to do this, just to let you know, type um, application ultimately. Um, so it's their legislation. So they could put a 15 metre mast in front of my house and I can only have a Three meter freestanding on that goal. Yeah, correct. Although if they try to put a 15 meter high mass in front of your house, then we might object to it on the grounds that that's an inappropriate location to stick a uh, telephone mast. To be fair, with um, mobile phone operators, they have to be very particular about where they stick their equipment um, because there is a lot of not so much planning, but um, government guidance regulating the way they can on the site. And, and they have to demonstrate that they've gone through a big process of where their site is going to be least controversial as possible. If I could see a 15 metre mobile phone mast from out of the front garden or mm -hmm. front of the house, would you take that into account as a, a street scene so if I apply for permission for a mast? Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I need to see street. Yeah, see what it's yeah, about, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in theory, yes, it's part of that part of the chapter. Yeah, okay. similar to. Telephone mass, uh, telegraph holes and yeah. land posts. And land posts. They are. Mm -hmm. You don't need permission mm -hmm. service. There's an awful lot of people watching and what's all the Well, they are. So you take into account the telegraph holes. Well, we take into account in terms of what the street team is with. It's, if there's lots of you know, street furniture in an area and you're standing in a mass with it, then the visual impact going to be significant, whereas if it's out on its own and there's just nothing around it, then obviously the, the views are going to be more, the, the, the eyes are going to be more drawn to that because it's a land structure and signal. You, you, basically, what I'm saying is you take common sense into account. Basically, we try. You, you do. Yeah. Well, we try. It's <laughs> not <laughs> always possible, but that's, that's the aim. <laughs> Are you saying that if I put a lamp post on the garden, would you put a lamp post on the garden? you would. But if the highways authority put a lamp post on their land, then they wouldn't because it's a, a requirement of their function, as it were. What about flagpoles? Flagpoles would be fine with them to change the station. Uh, as long as. Hello. 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 Hello.
Yeah. If people are considering the flagpole, if you Google uh, stealth antennas, a lot of the Americans are going down that route. <laughs> far from that pole with antennas inside them for flags. Do you get back to the roof on the flat floor this year? Yes, I will. I made a note. I'll get back to you on the floor. 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 I'll get back to you